Inga, how do you manage around the house without electricity? We cook on gas, that's okay. And I can use the washing machine, but I have to leave the house when I turn it on. And we have to heat the house with an open fire. All electric appliances give off electromagnetic fields and a growing number of Swedish employers are taking steps to protect their workforce from potential ill effects. Traders at one of the country's largest firms of stockbrokers spend up to 12 hours a day at their computer screens. Some of them became ill. Well, we didn't exactly know the problem at first. We tried to uh, improve the air. That was done. The problem was still there. So uh, we went for the next, uh, uh, the next probable cause, which were, of course, the screens. The clue here is that the glass in front of the screens is holding beams and rays and electricity all together off the person in front of it. It's uh, lead or something, some other protective metal in the glass. And we have also encased it in the table. Is this at great cost, though, to the company? Uh, the initial cost, of course, is uh, noticeable. But it's not that high. And if you... If there is a way of measure how people feel. And compared to that, the cost is very low. In 1993, Swedish scientists produced two population-based or epidemiological studies which reinforced the worldwide concern about electromagnetic fields. Both compared a group of cancer sufferers with a similar control group who didn't have cancer. One study found that the risk for people like train drivers who work in high fields could be more than double the average. We selected uh, uh, one group uh, with uh, subjects uh, suffering from leukemia and one group with brain tumors. And uh, we also had a control group uh, comprising about 1,000 uh, subjects without cancer. And then uh, we uh, compared these groups, and uh, the findings were that uh, uh, among uh, the cancer subjects, the magnetic field exposure was high more frequently than among the controls. Children are particularly vulnerable to the effects of any kind of radiation. Cancer occurs when cells divide, and because their cells divide more rapidly, they're at greater risk. Scientists at the Karolinska Institute looked at the records of 127,000 children living near big power lines over a 25-year period. They compared the number who had cancer with the rest of the population. Most of the studies performed until today have found an association between childhood leukemia and, um, and magnetic field exposure. And uh, in our study, we found about a two-fold increase in the risk if, you were, if, if the children were living close, well, within 50 meters from, from a, a big power line. If you're not exposed to magnetic fields, the risk is about 1 per 20,000 children. If there is an association with magnetic fields, the risk would be 2 per 20,000 children. Even though the absolute risk is small, few people at Bergsamra near Stockholm want to take it. They've been alarmed by the research. First, since this is uh, an area with a lot of children, people get, uh, they got worried about their children. But at least those who had their children at the kindergartens, uh, which are very close to the power lines. And, uh, well, the, the um, reaction had taken different forms. Some, some people moved away. There have been quite a lot of people moving away from this area because of this. But then we also organized ourselves in an action group in order to, to have the power line moved away rather than moving away ourselves. The campaign was a success and the electricity company has now agreed to bury these power lines. Even without proof that electromagnetic fields cause cancer, the Swedish government has seen fit to take action, recommending there should be no new building within 50 meters of power lines. There are uh, a number of epidemiological studies which indicate uh, a number, and not only one, uh, relationship between magnetic field and uh, childhood leukemia. And before we uh, know definitely, then we must uh, 
be cautious. And uh, we recommend what they call prudent avoidance. In Britain, the government talks of prudent avoidance, but when it comes to EMFs, it does nothing. Westbury Homes are building a new estate at Nailsey, west of Bristol, on a site crossed by two power lines. The company have another development on a similar site. It appears they're unconcerned about the health risk associated with electromagnetic fields. To find out what they'd say about it to customers, we took a concealed camera to Nailsey, posing as potential buyers. What about these um, power lines? There have been those reports. They have been around for quite a while now. Um, I think I've read the first one was about six years ago on that one. And they keep bringing up more reports, but they're not actually giving any facts. You know, they haven't really got any sort of evidence. Before we actually moved on the site, um, the people of Nelsey, because they didn't want any more build here at all, they're trying to um, come up with information with the pylons. And they came up with two little reports from Finland somewhere, where somebody had actually got leukaemia. Mm. But of course, there's always this percentage, you know, wherever you live people will actually get cancer. The evidence is much stronger than the Westbury Home saleswoman suggests. The first research indicating a link between power lines and childhood cancer was published 17 years ago in 1979 by two Americans, Nancy Wertheimer and Ed Leeper. Dispatches invited Ed Leeper to look at the Westbury Homes development at Nailsey. Like all electrical installations, power lines create both a magnetic and an electric field. He took readings of both. Every power line has its own uh, fields, and uh, this other power line that's uh, uh, nearby uh, may have something different. Uh, this is the one that runs through the gardens here of these yes, houses. Yes, in, in fact, it's uh, off scale on that same scale. So there we have almost 1,000 volts per meter on this and if I uh, let me let me walk a little further here and get it directly under the wire uh, we have a reading that's in excess of a thousand volts per meter uh, roughly 1100 volts per meter that's a a fairly high uh, electric field for this kind of situation if Ed Leeper had taken electric field readings in the houses he'd probably have found they were much lower walls can act as shields. But few families stay indoors all day long. Magnetic fields penetrate walls, and he found the magnetic field was 10 times higher than the level associated with the risk of cancer in the Swedish studies. This is high. That's so, very high, surely, for a line that runs so close to people's houses. Uh, yes, and it could be higher than this in the future. What you have to deal with in this sort of situation is, is that a line of this sort could give even considerably more than that uh, when it's fully utilized, when it's carrying all the power that it's capable of carrying. And generally, uh, a power company won't build a large line unless they have uh, uh, some indications that future usage will go up. Southwest Electricity Board, SWEB, owns the power lines at Nailsey. We wanted to know whether they think it advisable for houses to be built so close. Sweb referred us to the Electricity Association, which represents all the electricity companies. When it comes to building houses near power lines, it's important to remember that the land does not actually belong to the companies that built the lines. So when houses are being built, it's a matter for the local authority, the developer, and the potential owners of the houses, subject, of course, to the planning regulations. So as far as the planning regulations are concerned, yes, it is satisfactory to build those houses in the positions that they are.